Would you like to learn about Identity and Access Management, also known as IAM? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibt. And today we're going to talk about identity and access management. We'll begin by what is identity and access management. Identity and access management, also referred to as AAA, authentication, authorization, and accounting, is really about identifying a user when they come into the system and making sure they are who they claim to be. Determining that user's level of access and giving them access to only what they need. And then accounting or keeping track of what they've actually done. So let's begin by talking about authentication, which is the first step of determining if the user is who they say they are or who they claim to be. So let's say we have a user named Cindy who wants to access the system. Well, we need to know that Cindy is actually Cindy as opposed to say Sunny, who's pretending to be Cindy. So we really have three main approaches to this. We'll begin with the most simple and least secure, and we'll work our way up to the more complicated and more secure ways to determine that Cindy is who she actually claims to be. So for example, we could use a username and password. This is the least secure approach. We have say the user Cindy, and she creates a password, Cindy the cat. So here's the problem with this approach. It's relatively easy in the grand scheme of things to determine Cindy's password. Either Cindy used a ridiculously silly password like Cindy the cat, or we can use password breakers and, and ways that we can break passwords. And in the world of GPU computing and parallel computing and supercomputers, it's not that hard to actually break a password. So the first approach is something you know, like a password. Not the most secure, but very simple, easy to implement, and very inexpensive. So as we rise up, we need to go up another level of increased uh, security. And this is based on the principle of something you have and something you know. You're all familiar with this. You probably have an ATM card for your bank. When you go to your bank, you put your card in the machine, you enter your PIN number, and poof, you have access to your money. Well, that's on the principle of something you have, the ATM card, and something you know, which is your PIN. And we typically use that in technology quite a bit. We can have multi-factor authentication, whether it's a device or a text message, where you have to have that device, or you have to have that authenticator. We can use things like a smart card, and it's much stronger than just username and password. The only real challenge to this is it adds complexity, and of course, we have to train our users. But what if we need stronger than something you have and something you know? This moves us into the world of something you know and something you are, which is basically a password along with something biometric like your fingerprint or your iris scan. So now you need to be you for the most part, plus you need a password or a PIN. So this is getting much stronger. Here's the challenge with the something you are and something you know approach. The systems are not perfected yet, so they don't always work. They also add a tremendous amount of complexity, so that's its real weakness, the complexity. And if you're gonna use something you are, like your fingerprint, and something you know, you're gonna need a backup system for when fingerprints, for example, don't work, because they're not gonna work all the time. Maybe the user injures their finger, for example, and the fingerprint doesn't look the way it used to. So keep that in the back of your mind. Now, once we've identified who the user is, now we need to determine what the user can actually do. And this brings us into the world of authorization. Authorization is determining, can the user access something? So going back to our user, Cindy, Cindy may be able to access all the systems. Maybe she needs to because she's a systems administrator, or maybe so Cindy is a sales rep and she only needs access to the sales systems. And that's typically what we're doing with regards to authorization. We're determining what the user can actually do. So the user is going to act, attempt to access a resource, and the system is going to check their permissions. If they have permission, access granted. If they don't have permission, they will be blocked or denied. Now, in the world of authorization, we need to talk about the special account of privileged access. What is privileged access? Some users of the system will need a lot of rights or permissions. For example, the people that build the systems and manage the systems will need to get access to many of the systems. That means they have access to more systems, which means if something were to go wrong, they could do more harm. Or if a hacker, say Sunny the hacker, were to steal a privileged user's access, Sunny the hacker could actually cause big problems. So with regards to privileged access accounts, we need to secure them more than traditional accounts. 
So if we've got a systems administrator, for example, we must use some form of multi-factor authentication or biometric authentication because these accounts are much more critical and they matter so much more. So let's talk about some best practices with regards to authorization. Give users the least amount of access necessary to perform their job. This is referred to as the principle of least privilege. And make sure that if somebody needs access to more things, that we can approve it, request it, give them access, and if they don't need it, remove that access. So let's talk about the last element of identity and access management. That is accounting. Accounting is determined what the user has done. So we had Cindy, she authenticated herself to the system, she's been authorized to access certain resources, and the accounting phase is determining what Cindy actually accessed. Did she access the things she was supposed to? Did she find a way to access things she's not supposed to? So we have to keep track. We also need to audit accounts periodically to make sure that the permissions are correct. Maybe Cindy was a systems administrator and needed access to everything. And now maybe Cindy is a sales rep and doesn't need access to all these systems. So the accounting phase is determining what the user has done and also making sure their privileges are appropriate for their job. So we periodically have to go and audit these accounts. So today we talked about identity and access management, which was really about identifying who the user is or who they claim to be, determining what they are allowed to do, and then keeping track of what they've done. If you're looking to build an architect career, maybe a solution architect or a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect, we have a lot of free resources to help you on your architecture career, as well as programs to get you trained and hired. You can learn about these free resources, free eBooks, free webinars in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your technology career. This is Michael Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video or another one of our free webinars. Take care for now.